We got UFL free agency in full swing. Town halls are about to take place, and we're headed to the speculation zone to talk 2024 season schedules. All that and more on episode 75 of the UFL podcast. One, two, three. Oh! to another amazing edition of the UFL Podcast. I'm the ref representing Pro Football Newsroom, the leaders in spring football. For six years, by the way, we're officially six flipping years old. We hope you had a chance to watch me last night over here on this YouTube channel, which we'll talk about you should be subscribed to. But before we get to all that, as always, I'm joined by my man, Zach Common. How you doing today, my friend? Uh, you know, I'm doing just fine. It's uh, it's not that I'm getting the rust off for talking with you on this show. <laughs> it's more adjusting to uh, what our show pertains. If you guys haven't heard, Around the UFL has been uh, the name of the game since uh, two weeks ago. And we have been uh, kicking things off with a bang. A lot of new guests on there because we're getting a lot of our personalities involved with PFN. It's been a great roundtable series. But, yeah, it's good to get back into the mono we mono a discussion with you and I. It really has been 23 days it's since crazy. we've had an episode. It's kind of weird. I know. Well, I think partially it's because we've been doing around the UFL, so we've been trying to get that kind of up, off the ground, getting moving. And quite honestly, there wasn't a whole lot of news for us to do two shows worth. But, I mean, as the season comes near, now that we have a Monday show and a Friday show, things are going to be super easy, super fun. Because I'll tell you, the biggest the biggest feedback we always got over the last two years was, well, it's hard to watch the recaps because you're doing it the day be- or uh, the day before uh, the the next set of games, right? Exactly. The- and so we were doing recaps and previews, but now we can have a little bit of separation. And like you said, Zach, bring out some more of the newsroom personalities. You all know Ducky. You all know Luke Miller, James, Jake. Now you get to see him face to face and with the addition of Mel's brand new face. You might not recognize her, but like I said, it's a face you'll soon remember and maybe even get some of those tiny Panther points points. We're not even going to get into points here. Thank God we don't have points on this show because I'm not doing too hot over there. I feel like every time we rotate would be biased on the points just for that sake. (laughs) I am. I'm controlling the high chair today. Five points for me just by default. (laughs) You know, you're right. Five points for me. <laughs> no, <I'm> Good <laughs> for you. <laughs> but, hey, if you guys haven't checked out around the UFL, I don't know what you're doing. It airs every Monday, live, 6 p.m. Eastern, over here right on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. And if you're listening to audio, just tune in the next day on Tuesday because it's a live show. We can't do it live on audio, at least yet. I don't know. Maybe we will. One day we'll figure it out. But for now, Monday's video, Tuesday's audio we could we could use a follow you you know follow us at UFL podcast but follow mm-hmm. at around the UFL Facebook Twitter Instagram you know the whole deal audio versions of the podcast make sure you're you're uh, give it drop us a review good or bad preferably good uh, same with around the UFL we love the feedback you know we love listening to the fans let your voices be heard please so you know we want to make it a show for everybody because that's what we we like to do we like to talk spring football with the spring football community. Uh, we also have uh spring stock three. Maybe you heard of it. Maybe you heard of it. Zach. You might've heard of this one. I, I think I, I think I'm aware of what the third or is it 3.0. I had someone actually in the comments ask, is it really three or two? I, well, I it's whatever you want. To, it's the third iteration. It's whatever you yeah. want to call it. It's three to us in some fashion. Yeah. But as I long think as you, you might've heard event. of it. Yeah. As long as you come to the event, you can call it whatever you want. I mean, you can call it summer stock. I don't care. Uh, but here's the deal. It's taking place. We're just about nine weeks away. How crazy is that? A week from now, we'll be two months away from not only UFL kickoff, but spring stock three. 
as you may have heard, is taking place in a little town called Arlington, Texas. Mm -hmm. We're heading out of Birmingham for the first time, but Stallions fans can't be too mad because the Stallions are also heading to Birmingham. So back to back to back. Uh, so we're kind of doing a Birmingham show, but we're going to be there with the, the Renegades fans as well. More details on location. I'm, I'm working on nailing that down, but here's what I actually want to know. I want to know from the fans, would you rather us go to an indoor venue, right? There's plenty around, or would you like to do a good old fashioned tailgate where we bring out the tent, we bring out the speakers, we bring out the grill, some food, Maybe some pop. I, I I think we'll probably get yelled at if we put some beer in the cooler like yeah, we did I, last I, year. <laughs> definitely Maybe a though, Texas is different. In Houston, they don't care. Uh, and uh, trust me, I know. <laughs> you know, I'm for for the safety of my, for the safety in this scenario, BYOB. But I do think it's a very a very good question for you guys to bring up in the comments. We're also going to bring this up on our YouTube posts in the community along mm -hmm. social. By the way, you guys have done a great job responding to those. Um, the, for the example, we asked about the votes on the conferences, and my God, I didn't expect the amount of votes we got. We got mm -hmm. 200 on just the UFL conference alone, yeah, another 887 on the XFL. You guys love voting on here, so we are going to keep posting stuff like that on here. We will uh, post a poll about that soon on all platforms to kind of let you know. I get both. As long as the weather holds up, that's the main thing. It's mm -hmm. so much nicer to have a tailgate in Texas if you can get the weather to stay just fine enough during the pregame, which we have had Mixed luck in Birmingham with that, which is why we've resorted to a great venue that we had down there, of course, at Casey's. Yeah, and it is, I'll say, it's 50-50 at that time of the year in Texas. So we'll, we'll have to see. Maybe we have a contingency plan in place. But either way, let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. We want to know, would you like it indoors? Would you like a tailgate? And, hey, if you can't make it to Arlington, we get it. We're also going to be streaming it here live on YouTube, which leads me to my next point. If you're watching over here, make sure you subscribe. Click the bell. It builds, it morale. builds morale. It also lets you know when we're going live, when new episodes drop, when around the UFL's on, when we got a new short on, when the UFL podcast is out, when Spring Stock 3 is on, when Summer Stock 3 is on. Maybe we do something for Motor City Meetup. These are all the things that you're missing out on if you're not subscribed to our channel. And, I mean, that's just six years, Zach. I Can I... Six flipping years. I, I'll yeah, be honest say time with out for that again. <laughs> no, no curtains because we're actually recording this before I do my six year live stream. I'm so excited to do it. But since it's tech, it's kind of happened in the past. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed all of the, the, the trip down memory lane, right? The history of newsroom. And Zach, I, I did this wonderful thing. Well, I thought it was fun. I don't know if everyone else will think it's fun. Uh, but I went through all of my press credentials because I'll tell you, my first press credential Ooh. wasn't the XFL. It was the Spring League for an XFL event. That's right. And, and so now it really is. I've talked about it. The, the, the theme of this year is not only fun. I talked about this, this is the year of fun, but it's also the year of coming full circle, right? From the Spring League to the XFL to the Spring League to the spring league becoming sort of kind of the USFL to now the USFL and the XFL coming together, becoming the UFL. I mean, newsroom has been here throughout the journey. Uh, I don't want to discount AAF, but they weren't necessarily as tied in unless you count Daryl Johnston, uh, kind of the brain trust that's, behind that's uh, a, a lot of these things. So anyway, we're going to go through, uh, I hope you enjoyed all that. Not we're going to go through, uh, but thanks everybody <laughs> for joining. Uh, and now back to reality where it is Thursday, where we're recording, uh, I'm excited six years in and we have a league to talk about and the league's the UFL. And you know what? The dispersal draft is done. Uh, I think we go over our thoughts. My, my big thought, and I think I echoed this on around the UFL again, every Monday, 6 PM Eastern. See you there. Yep. Uh, my thought is this. If you look at the amount of talent that didn't get picked up, it tells you a lot about what these teams are going to look like in this upcoming spring generally when you see a new spring league and we've talked about this for years now but generally when there's a new spring league there's two three generally weeks before these teams really show what kind of team they're going to be right they're still because we have a short runway with training camps things like that with this league you're essentially carrying over four teams 
from the XFL, four teams from the USFL, although the names might not make sense, but in, in all reality, that's, that's kind of the, the, the situation. But then with the addition of all of the top talent from the eight US, uh, eight teams that didn't make it into the UFL and you know, the, the new league, the United football league is going out there and they're saying they are the premier spring football league. And I mean, it's hard to deny it. Just looking at how this talent is stacked up and you know, it, the biggest shame is the guys that aren't going to make it. And the hope is, is that this is such a success that we have such good quality of football on the field this year, because really kind of a continuation of a third year for the USFL and a second year for the XFL, which we even saw dividends of the USFL teams last year going in their second year. Um, that the hope is that it's such a success that we do get expansion sooner rather than later, where a lot of these guys are going to be waiting, ready to play. Now, well, we could argue, will they be available? Will they be in the CFL, IFA? I don't know. I waffle on the IFA so much. I go back and forth I, in their TV I, you deal. Know. It flipped the other way again. But anyway, this is not the IFA <laughs> podcast. Uh, but anyway, uh, what what are your initial thoughts on on post dispersal draft, super draft, all of that? Post dispersal draft being that uh, you know it is amazing to see how much is left on the table, and I'm kind of, and kind of seeing what is being decided on for futures for these players post dispersal draft or in super draft uh i would say uh free agency if you will because there have of course been you know some guys that they've gotten that chance that they had to wait through this whole process and now you see them get picked up we're seeing rosters getting overturned or even now being changed from people that we thought were protected we'll talk a little more in the free agency portion of this episode of course but like I mean, we're talking, for example, things that I wasn't thinking about have come out that are like final thoughts for me with the draft with like, for example, the fact it's a draft, which mm -hmm. keep in mind, you know, we've talked about this with the USFL draft been back in the past two years in different capacities, whether it's the collegiate draft or the original draft. It is a draft draft being you still have to sign these players. Now, keep in mind, one thing that is a big caveat and I uh, shout out to Nick Thorne, who's on our our PFN crew who has done an amazing job at co basically cataloging the UFL roster. And it has a publicly available file, by the way, that you guys should pick up. Um, he has found the trend when we've seen these signings, by the way, a lot of the uh, ROI signings that are draft picks LOI. are being treated like draft picks where, yeah, yeah. you know, the XFL guys who signed like, well, not rights of intent, but letters of intents mm -hmm. where they signed letters of intents, but they didn't sign officially. They have to go through the process of actually signing on to teams now. Whereas yep. you see a lot of the USFL guys actually put pen to paper and they don't have to really be touched. It's very fascinating because the free agency drops they do on UFL PR channels right now are almost like a puzzle. You have to pick out and choose which ones are actual free agents and which ones were guys that are like, well, we expect them to be here, but because they didn't sign their LOIs, we have to like read between the lines on who's actually here or not right now. It's right. kind of, it's a bit of a challenge. I imagine for Nick, especially he, yeah. and I've talked to him about this. He does pull his hair out a little bit of this because it does make things a little interesting when they drop. We have signed 60 players. Well, actually we signed like a little less because right. really these guys were here already. Yeah, I know. That's what I think that one threw me off too with that 60 players. Like, wow, that's a lot of free agents to sign. You start going through the list. You're like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, wait. I've seen oh, this on okay. already. <laughs> Which it makes sense. You know what? I'm not even going to be mad at him. You know what? If free promotion. Every release you put out, that's a little bit more promotion. Everything that you say, that's potentially another set of eyeballs that's going to see you. Potentially another pair of... Uh, uh, well, uh, people coming to sit in your seats at the game. <laughs> I think you know where I was going to go with that. But oh, anyway, I know what you mean. I know what yeah. you're talking about. It reiterate. It reiterates things. Just just thought that was fascinating. It's like it's kind of like an aftermath thing. I don't like beyond that, like final things from the actual super drafts and all that are really, like I said earlier, it's 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 some of the talents that are left over and kind of analyzing who maybe gets a chance of free agency. Um, I'm still holding on just because. For those who don't know, I've been taking over some showboats responsibility writing for the website. Shocker, I can write articles. Uh, but, you know, they have specifically, Coach DiFilippo, um, has gone overboard and was the one guy that went overboard on picking up everybody and anybody mm -hmm. as a draft pick. 
It was really and was the only one that went bust on on rosters drafting players. <laughs> yep. Just keep yep. that in mind. That was a that, that was incredible. He was at 77 before free agency even started. <laughs> or I mean, 76. 77 after there, I, I'll tell you, man, I'm uh the, the showboats are gonna be scary. The showboats have the the potential to be I, I like that a roster, scary, dude. scary flipping team, man. They did and, lose John Williams in the CFL free agency is the only knock now, and we'll talk mm-hmm. more on that. But like they they look good. I yeah, like them looking, a lot. Well, they're looking. I mean, they got Case down there. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just, that's pretty nice. I, I like and it. they still got Ryan Willis, which I think he got uh, dealt a, a raw deal last year. I think I mean, we can we see what he's capable of. And um, I don't know if he got a chance to really sh- showcase that last year. But anyway, free agency, you know, dispersal draft done, super uh, super draft done. All of it's done. We we have free agency. You know, there was the big one that popped up this week. I think there's people that are happy, people that are worried. Uh, Chad Ochocinco apparently is interested in joining the UFL. And then furthermore, our like we were just talking, our buddy down uh, with in Memphis there, D. Filippo, he said, "Hey, give me a call, <laughs> right? Uh, what are your What are your thoughts on this? Because I have thoughts on this, uh, uh, but I, I I'm curious what you have to say here. Threw a bunch of gas on that one when he did <laughs> when he did that too. I'm glad we look full. I, I'm always happy when we do the no curtains on this show because mm-hmm. I'm going to be a lot, little more chill on this than I was coming in. Um, just us discussing things as we will <laughs> uh look this to me and i think to anyone with a with any amount of decent brain cells will say this is a pr stunt in its entirety Ke- chad ochocinco i know to keeps up his physical health and dude can still outrun people in 40 yard dashes and all that i know chad ochocinco looks like that too dude's 46 to i've seen people compare him with to from the fcf it's the FCF. It's a shorter yard game. You have less of a distance needed and a little bit less cardio needed for that, for the way they played. I just don't see it. And I mean, I'm putting a very big emphasis with bold and italics. I don't see it. This is a PR stunt. I don't Mm -hmm. buy it. And even if it was real, and this is where I'm glad you and I have talked before him, because this is the part I was going to lead in with was, Mm -hmm. This is taking a roster spot from someone that actually needs it. I get that Chad Ochocinco is a big celebrity. He is a really a Hall of Fame s talent. He's borderline that and hasn't been brought up that way. But you know he is that quality of a talent and is one of the best p- p- players in the modern era, at least twenty first century, to play the game. But you can't bring him on. I I, right. I, do, I would be fully against this for the sake of guys like like we're talking like. We fight online about Cam Eccles Looper not getting a right. spot. Like, are you going to tell me that I'm going to watch Chad Ochocinco, who's 46 and has no business coming on to a roster like this, take a spot from a dude that literally needs that spot? Sorry, mm-hmm. I'm fully against it. I know some of the casual NFL guys have chimed in, and that's what this was all about personally, was just getting a few of those guys going, oh, Chad, Chad might be getting it. Oh, that's amazing. We should get Chad. No. No, this is not what this league's for. Do not bring in Chad. I, you will get the same result as you get with T.O. and the FCF. It'll be a quick headline that fizzles in a month. That right. is exactly what happened with the FCF with Terrell Owens. Do not do it. Yeah. Even if, I don't think it's real at all, but you can tell just me saying this with like the shred of me thinking there's a chance. I would be very visibly upset if they wasted a roster spot on a 46-year-old Chad Ochocinco. Right. Is all I'm going to tell you. Well, I'll start with this. Could he sign? I mean, anything could happen. Anything could happen, especially in spring football. I mean, we've seen, it feels like a little bit of everything. Do I think <laughs> he's going to sign? No, no, 100%. I don't, <laughs> I don't think there's one little grain of me that thinks that we're going to see Chad Ochocinco in the UFL this season. Uh, I, I mean, I'll, we were talking about this before the show. I know some of the newer fans might not remember we were just talking about we've been here six years, so we've kind of seen a little bit of everything. But if you weren't aware, same man here, Chad Ochocinco, he was also set to take place. He was also set to appear at the XFL Summer Showcase back in 2020, yeah. 2019, really, 2019. So we're talking Sands four years. Fast forward to the event, Chad Ochocinco, he's not there. 
But you know what? The league got something out of it because people were talking about Ocho Cinco, XFL. Ocho Cinco got his name back in the press. So, you know, that probably made him feel good. And here we are again, four years later, kind of playing the same game. I'll be honest. I think Coach Flip is just having a little bit of fun with it. But who knows? I mean, maybe, maybe here we are. Is he going to (laughs) be... Now, here's the thing, though. In this, in 2020, when Ocho Cinco was going to show up at the showcase, he was trying out as a kicker, right? right. So then even if this all happens, you're even, like, even if Ocho Cinco ends up on the showboats, he, chances are he's not even going to be a, a – uh, he, he's not even going to be in the position that you, 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 know, you remember him, a receiver, right? So anyway – do I think it's going to happen? No. Do I think it's no. fun to talk about? Sure. Does it get people talking? Hell yeah. So you know what? I can't be mad at it too much. I'm going to add regard. a caveat too, because I yeah. I know some people might drop a comment on their YouTube version or might discuss this online. Yes, I'm aware. Roster spot, because this is an argument I've also heard. Well, you realize it's only be two weeks. Like there's, not, like, there's not a realistic chance he'd make a roster, right? And I'm like, fair, but that's two extra weeks. Someone like a, like a Cam Eccles looper or the like could use to prove their roster mm-hmm. spot is worth sticking, you know? And then again, not saying what happened. This is like jumping logic where I believe he would actually land a roster and play all 10 weeks and do that whole thing. I'm with, it's still a PR stunt to me either way, but mm-hmm. you know, there are, I just have to add on like that two weeks still does matter. That's extra film oh, yeah. and extra, you know, exposure to coaching staffs, coaches talk, personnel's talk. Like, Chad does not do unless he's there just to teach, which I wouldn't mind if he was serious about coaching. I think he's a great coaching candidate. I think he should like Heinz Ward was in this, like he's a receiver candidate. And if Chad was in for that, that's great. I just don't think that his resources are best spent being in there just to promote his brand. I don't think that helps the league in the long run whatsoever. So, you know, maybe I, 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 maybe I'm old man yells at cloud, that's how I've stood on this. And I've, I've been this way with a few other people in the, in leagues like this that aren't even as big as Chad Ochocinco, where I've talked to people. I'm like, some people I'm like, are you in this league for the reasons others are, you know, that's where I'm at with some folks. Like, yeah, say Chad. I know a lot of people feel the same way, similar to like uh, Johnny Manziel. Cause he was kind of bouncing around between all of them for, for a quick second, never made it to the XFL, the USFL or the UFL, but he was in the FCF. He was in the Alliance. Uh, he was even in the CFL for uh, a spot of T um, just, just a little tea, just a <laughs> little bit. So we talked a lot about Ocho Cinco. We're in full agency. You know, we have noted here to talk about free agents. We're shocked that are still on the market, but I want to take a moment to talk about one that I'm shocked that is on the market now who wasn't. And that is my man, superstar Bahar Kenji Bahar for real, you know, 12 and oh, he, uh, to me, the way I look at it is he helped turn this team around last year along with coach coach Curtis Johnson. And so I'm surprised because, you know, he was protected. He was coming in. Uh, Now we have seen them make a couple other picks. And I will say, I will say Nolan Henderson, if you haven't checked his highlights, you need to check him out because Nolan Henderson looks like he's going to come in here fast and furious and he's got a mean arm. Uh, But I am still surprised to see them let go of Baharim. Now, I wonder if maybe there's something else going beyond the scenes. Maybe he found an opportunity in the CFL with the new contract structure with the UFL decide to opt out. I don't know. We'll have to see how it plays out. Maybe he lands on another team. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I know St. Louis is kind of still, it feels like has a spot for another quarterback. I don't know if Kenji's mm. that guy, but could be an opening there. Uh, Memphis, there's no room. I mean, they're already too stacked as it is. Way too much. Uh, but I, I'm a, I am surprised to see him go uh, just because I think he was uh, overall a net positive for the team last year. And, espe- I mean, you bring him help in the with uh, Nolan Henderson or, you know, any of the other guys that are over there to help him. And, you know, I know you don't like a team with two quarterbacks, but it, there, is a, there is a situation where it could work just – you have to know your scenarios, right? It can't be like, okay, you're exactly. going to play this half and you're going to play this half. It should be, okay, this guy is good in, you know, the red zone and this guy's, you know, good from the other end of the field. So maybe we kind of disperse and mix them in that way. I don't know. Anyway, well, yeah, you, you, know, you know how I talk about with like Mike Riley, how that's the wrong way to do it. Yeah. 
Like, it's funny because uh, Reggie Barlow did it the right way. Yeah. That's how yeah, you yeah. do a two QB system. Derek King's like a gadget player, but he can do all of it, like completely throw the defense off because he has an arm and he can run. So, like, I'm with that's how you do it. But, like, yeah, I mean, look, I, I think like Bahar is an interesting drop, isn't it? Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I thought when they went through the draft and they didn't pick anybody up, you know, I thought that signaled that they're very comfortable with him possibly being that number one, or they pick up like a Reed Sinet as a competition piece. Mm-hmm. I didn't think it would be Bahar. It's time to go Reed, We saw you're available. You're up because I know there's a, there's a lot of Brahma's fans that are really high on Reed Sinet. And I think he showed a lot of upside last season in the XFL before injury. So I get those points. I think maybe a little more, maybe a bit more polished than Kenji, but I didn't think they'd let Kenji go. That one, that's where I'm with you, where I'm like, I'm shocked he got to the open market mm-hmm. like that. And that's where I'm like, I'm hoping he gets picked up somewhere and gets another camp opportunity. But now if he's not on Houston, it's going to be harder for him, really, because it's getting really tight with these QBs in, yeah. on the UFL level. If he's not considered, especially now that he's no no shot to start mm-hmm. in Houston, he's off roster. Yeah, you know? it's, it's crazy to think about. I mean, it. The competition is tough, right? And so clearly there's something there that, uh, you know, Coach Johnson felt, okay, maybe this is a change that we need to make right now. Uh, But, hey, who knows? As the season changes, you're looking for a guy that needs to come onto your roster that knows the scheme. Well, you know who you're calling, right? You know what I mean? Like you get into two weeks in and maybe things aren't working the way they are. Of course, you're going to be 2-0, but maybe not by the point margin that you want to be. Bring in Kenji back. I don't know. We'll see. We'll have to see. But this is the craziness of free agency we're seeing players kind of bounce around uh at least coming from the 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 disbanded markets but this Mm -hmm. is just i didn't expect to see this one yeah that one that one did shock me a lot for sure um i'll tell you some other one some other ones like we're going through the list here and just kind of double checking some things you know Mm -hmm. uh i think a few that stick out are some veteran players that either they went elsewhere or they just aren't on lists and i'm wondering if it's because of just age not saying age is the defining factor but like some positions you know it feels like you get younger new talent in and they kind of get shuffled out even if they had good years for example Devonte bosby who's been such a regular he's not anywhere to be seen on these lists and that surprises me greatly given how well he's performed at both league levels on the xfl and usfl side uh and to continue in the secondary josh or not josh powell yeah not josh powell. yeah josh yeah, powell Ugh. i'm saying that wrong wrong but um, I'll, I'll go back to that because mm-hmm. I'm spacing, I'm spacing on my, on myself right now. Um, but I guess to readdress elsewhere in other positions, Phil Lindsay is another one off the top of my head for mm-hmm. names, but in the running back category, well, isn't, isn't Reggie Corbin still not signed anywhere either, right? He is also not, which again, it's crazy. How do you make a graphic with him on there? <laughs> and he ends up nowhere. I, I mean, again, that's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. And I wonder if we'll see some of these guys p- end up in like the ELF. Um, you know, the I, like I said, I don't want to get too much into the IFA. I waffle on if the IFA is going to be something or not. I mean, they did just announce a TV deal, but if you look into it, there, we're not going to no. go into why it's funny, but there's some funny things. I'm just going to say that there's just some funny, I, funny things there. I got Big a few Deborah. more. That's all a few I'll more. say. Big Deborah. Do you know what I'm talking about, Zach? Yes. Actually, I, yes. Okay. All right. Just, <laughs> I know what you're if you mean. If you know, you know. <laughs> I know exactly what you're meaning. I have other points on the IFA in terms of uh, some things I've researched into it. We'll talk a little bit later in the show. Mm. Um, and I, I'm a moron, by the way. People are probably in the comments. Uh, it's Joe Powell, you idiot. And I'm like, yes, it is Joe. Because I should know that because Joe Powell is in the National Arena League now. Um that no one, I'm surprised that you know no one picked him up. Now credit, I will say to Joe's credit here, Joe did basically imply he was going to go coach with with at the time the Cobras where he's played in the past, and then proceeded months later to kind of come off as well. Why didn't anyone pick me up? And I'm going, well, didn't you kind of? My I digress. It, it definitely yeah. came off like he was going to be hanging up the cleats a little bit, but no, he's with uh, Carolina again. So uh, he's got a place to play, but like, those are some guys like he, especially, I mean, talk about a dude that had an interception in the champ in the XFL championship was a vital part of the renegade secondary, you know, 
yes, he's a little older than some of the people available, but that's a guy, like, if he wants to keep playing and he still is going to contribute well and has been someone that's trying to get that next opportunity, like last chance opportunity, you know, hey, bring him in, you know, if he was able to bring in. But that's that's where the the breaks, kid. Them's the breaks, hard breaks. Yep, yep. And, I mean, it's going to be – we have less than a month until training camp, so, you know, by then we're going to get a a, a better idea of what these teams look like. And then once training camp's over, we're going to get a really good idea of what these teams look like. And then – I mean, we're talking about people that were surprised that didn't make the cut. We're, uh, it's going to be crazy when final cuts are done in this league because I think there's going to be some names in there that we're going to look at and say, how did they not make it? But with such tight competition and only eight teams, I mean, it's inevitable that some names that you all remember from last year, the year before, they might not they might not make the cut. But, you know, we'll be here to talk about it every Friday and Monday now. I mean... That's the beauty of pro football newsroom. Six years holding strong. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, you know, so we talked about drafts, talked about free agency. You know, one of the things that I've said always worked well for the XFL and even to a certain extent, the USFL was fan engagement events. Yes. And now, just as of this week, we have had two announced already. Now, we'll we'll talk about what what I think that could mean and potentially, you know, timelines on other things. But first and foremost, the first one that came out, that came out on Wednesday afternoon, uh, an email was sent out to all season ticket holders, 2024, keep that in mind, 2024 season mm-hmm. ticket holders for the Michigan Panthers. So if you were a season ticket holder last year, but didn't renew yet, you you probably didn't get that email or you didn't get that email. But if you are a season ticket holder for this upcoming season, you would have got an email that they got a town hall event coming uh, February 10th, February 10th at the Macomb uh, Center for the Arts, I believe. And here's the cool thing about it. You're getting to hear from the UFL CEO, Russ Brandon, and head coach, Mike Nolan. Now, when that first one dropped, I said, oh, good. They're going to be doing some fan engagement events. Mm -hmm. One day later, Thursday, so yesterday, the Birmingham Stallions announced that they have a fan engagement event as well, or a town hall, rather, February 8th. And that's taking place at Protective Stadium. So kind of even cooler. And yeah. so you have Russ Brandon, you have Coach Skip Holtz, but then you also get the man, the myth, the legend, Daryl Moose Flippin' Johnson, Johnston. Sorry, I, I, <laughs> I just, I have mumbly mouth. I know what his name is. People correct me that I know, I know it's Johnston. Anyway, it just, I don't enunciate well enough. Uh, but to me, hey, if I was in Michigan or if I was in Birmingham, I'm going to be at one of these events because, well, one, this is the great thing. You get to go to these events. You get to learn about the league, watch it build from the ground up. Right. And realistically, they want your feedback while they're there. They want to know what works for you, what doesn't work to make that fan experience all that much better. Plus, you get a Q&A with the guy that's running the league, Russ Brandon, the coach of your team, and in the case of Birmingham, Daryl Flippin' Johnston. I mean, we we as we know, we talked to him at Summerstock 2 last year. I would never turn down an opportunity to be around Daryl Johnston. If anybody knows football, it's that man. And beyond knowing football, he loves not just football, but spring football. We, we talked about it before. That very, dude is out there. Much. We saw it on United by Football. He's loading up buses, unloading buses, talking to players, talking to coaches, talking to vendors, working everything that needs to work to make sure that the product that we love is on the field. And so, I mean, you have Daryl Johnson and Br- Russ Brandon in, in Birmingham. You could basically ask him everything you want. Will they give you an answer? Well, I mean, it depends. Um, <laughs> you but can try Zach, uh, so we got two of these down. I, I'm hoping, but what do you think? Do you think we see more of these pop up in that same time frame of early February? Well, I think they're scheduling all of them right now. I hope so. The, the, my my evidence goes based on the fact that this is very much an XFL play right here. This is exactly what the XFL did last season. They did town halls in all their markets that mm-hmm. they tried to get coaches out when they flew them out, sat down, had a chat, you know, whether it was at a bar or restaurant, you name it, you know, and you know this very very well, you know, that they wanted to get personal with some of their fans this way. I actually really thought this it was a great move last year. That was mm-hmm. something I really liked about the 2023 iteration of the XFL is that they did have these events where, you know, 
coaches did sit more in person and ask this stuff, you know, and it's not like, I don't think USFL did this well. Um, they did have their own fair share of things and getting guys out in the public, whether it was Mike, Mike Knoll and Todd Haley having his own coaches show, Skip Holtz being at so many events. I mean, dude's a freaking legend already in Birmingham for just the two championships in this level of football. So not saying they did that wrong, but I did love the town hall aspect of it what they did with coaches in the XFL last year because it does allow fans to, you know, at least at the best of their capabilities and what is allowed for the league stipulation to answer questions in the most down to earth answer available to you right in front of you. So mm -hmm. these are great. What I did find is a fascinating aspect to these that is differentiating in these first two. And I got to thank Jake ball, who is uh, running Panther shadow, who is the Panther, basically a big pan, our pan, pan, Panthers podcast who's out there. Um, he was surprised to see that Michigan's was through the season ticket holder email and not publicly announced, which mm -hmm. I'm also kind of surprised because, you know, I know Birmingham is the epicenter of the USFL craze for a lot of people, but Michigan is a rabid fan base. Oh, yeah. I'm, at least in terms of Detroit. And I get that the playoffs are going on right now and you're got focus on that i know they're not playing in town but still the championship is coming up and it's more the focus right now in the city but i'm kind of shocked they left it on email i'm hoping the rest of these teams do it where it's open to the public you know because the xfl that was one caveat where i kind of wished it wasn't that based all their teams did it season ticket style mm -hmm. i would prefer how they did with birmingham where it's like open it to the public you know if you want interest and you want to sell tickets you know they're going to sell season tickets at the birmingham event Right. You know, that's a perfect time to be like, hey, you're buying in now, you know, and season ticket holders can come and they can sell that, too. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm hoping it becomes with all eight teams open personnel and open to the public where it's not email centric, because that does open more ticket sales opportunities. And really, it opens up PR opportunities. I, I was kind of like I said, that stipulation kind of shocked. Mm -hmm. And well, I, I'm hoping that they change that tune with the rest of the markets. Yeah, well, I think they might be, and I, I and I don't think the the Michigan event was necessarily planned to be exclusive to season ticket holders. I think that's just the mailing list that it ended up going out to because I've seen a couple other publications mentioning it. But the one thing they didn't do is what Birmingham did today is just put it out on social media and say, "Hey, everybody, show up at this thing that's going on." So I don't know. My, my I'm with you though too, Zach, because realistically if if you're already a season ticket holder you already sold me right right well right? this is, this I already is a got perfect my seat. time to have any ticket holder any personnel guy if you're even on the fence these are perfect events for people that are on the fence hardcore they really need to see if this is going to last and the big part like i just said if it's gonna last and daryl johnson said has said in recent interviews you know they felt they could have done better at addressing the stability concerns year two Mm -hmm. This is what you use these events for is to say, hey, we, we didn't leave. You know, it's year three. Were you a tweener for the first two? Come back. Look, we have so much value to bring you. We're a two time championship team, at least in Birmingham's case, Michigan. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do that more so. And I hope it's, you know, based on the repeat, of course, I am going off what the XFL did last season and how it's being looked at in terms of you're sending it to an email for tickets, season ticket holders. My brain goes, oh, it's a season ticket holder event. Right. right but if right. it's not like good for them advertise it that's not though please do they that to. because yeah. that needs to happen no 100 percent agree yeah they, i think they need to hit the paint as much as they can because we're just about two months till kickoff uh which <laughs> i think we'll tight. <laughs> which you know actually now that we're talking about town halls i think we take a little detour into what i like to call what we like to call what you love to enjoy the speculation zone. So Ooh. let's kick that intro real quick. Sign you up. Welcome to the speculation zone, our favorite place to talk, talk about things that, Hey, maybe happen, maybe won't happen, but we get to pick our brains and have a little bit of fun. So we're having some town hall events. They're all taking place around the same time frame. Like we said, we have one for the eighth, one for the 10th, it feels like it feels like we'll get more of these. Hopefully we'll get all eight teams. If we have it in Houston, you know, I'll be there. I already know we have some of the newsroom crew heading up to Michigan for that one. We'll have some in Birmingham. Uh, so we'll give you some coverage on those, but it, you know, the big thing, you know, everybody's kind of waiting on all eyes on where is the 2024 season schedule. 
And me seeing these town hall events makes me think, well, if they're going to have these events, it makes me feel that they're going to have all of these tickets kind of ready to go, ready to sell. Although they are for sale in some markets, places like Houston, not so much yet, which we'll speculate on that as well. But I don't know. Call it an ink, uh, call it a, a, a spidey sense. I don't know. I feel like that at worst we'll have the schedules by February 8th when that earlier event happens. Now, if the, if we have more events and they happen a little bit earlier, I'd say move that timetable back a little bit too. Um, we were hearing that the schedule could be released as early as last week. Well, last week's over. <laughs> it's by didn't, didn't it's happen. Goodbye. <laughs> you know, so you know that's the beauty of spring football. But um, thoughts on that, and then I have some thoughts on maybe why we're waiting on the schedules and uh, speculations on this why. But uh, does it feel like a reality? I mean, it feels like it almost has to be a reality because we're getting so flipping close. But I, what are your thoughts here? I certainly can dream. Uh, I'm, I'm. That does sound very morbid. How I put it, put it that way, or very low down. Uh, look, I don't know if this is exactly where they'll do it. Um, but if it, if they wanted to surprise us would be a great surprise. You just need to, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking in terms of how you do social media and PR with these leagues, mm -hmm. they would have to be like posting it, like about the time they were to like schedule something out to tell people in Birmingham so mm -hmm. that they're not having a bunch of stallions fans run to Twitter, run to Twitter and Facebook and Insta and go, Oh right. my God, here's the schedule. It dropped. It's like, and all the PR guys back in like LA or whatever, like, for like Fox's end are like, wait, yeah. what's going on? Oh right, God. Right. And they have to hurry. But, they probably have something close to loaded up. Like most mm -hmm. of the time when it comes to schedule building, you're going to have like, for the most part, I think a good chunk of it's done. It comes down to like little details. I'm like, are we sure? Is it 101% confirmed that we're doing this here or there? And right. that's what it is. I don't know if this is it personally. I think it's, it's gotta be to me. If I'm going to give you a time, I've told people in my honest opinion and just how I view it with just how some things have come out in recent years, it's got to, I mean, next month is really it. Like, you know, it's mm. got to be out by February. No way in hell they wait till March to drop it. And it's going to be, to me, the first two weeks of February at the latest is that threshold. You know, right. I would ideally believe they get it out before the middle point of next week and you get it out before next month starts. But right. you and I know how this works. Sometimes two months is all they give and people will still buy the tickets. It's not ideal. I mm -hmm. wish they'd put it out like three, four months in advance and you have like a bunch of groundswell and PR, but it's a little different here. We're, we're talking about a league that spent up until uh, December formulating its plans. And now it's about, all right, now let's get this ball rolling, yep. you know? And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm bullish. I'm extremely bullish to uh, buying all stock that it has to be in the first two weeks of February. This thing drops, right? That, that, right. That's my threshold right there. So, I guess I'll use this opportunity to bring up the elephant in the room, because if I were to sp double speculate, speculate on the speculation on why we're double even waiting for, you <laughs> yeah, why, you know, why we don't have the schedule yet. I mean, to me, it feels like it's, uh, there's a, there's an indicator there. I won't say that this is the case or it isn't the case, but it feels like the indicator is, well, Houston's still not selling tickets. Technically, they haven't announced where they're playing this year. Yeah. Uh, as you know, the you know the Roughnecks, their first two years that they played, they were at TDECU. They're doing some renovations in 2024. So there's a little bit of a, a booking problem for them. They're in talks with Rice Stadium, but as far as I know, it hasn't been 100% finalized yet. Now, that was that's what I was hearing as of last week. Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. It feels like it's close. It feels like it has to be close, uh, but I would wager that um, that's probably a, a big reason why we don't have this yet is they want to make sure 100% that that is locked down before they communicate anything because what would be worse is, okay, you put out the schedule early and then around this time you're like, ah, actually, those Houston games, eh, they're going to be somewhere else or uh, we have to change away the home and the away because that venue's booked for this day, right? That to me Sorry, is a much guys. worse problem <laughs> than oh, oopsie, here's our schedule. Now it does, it does put Houston and their ticket people in a difficult spot because they have the shortest runway of anybody. Sure, they're accepting season ticket reserves, uh, but like I put in my season tickets, I selected my tickets. 
what happens now? Do I reselect my tickets? Do they automatically assign me as a comparable seat at Rice Stadium? Or if Rice Stadium falls through, what's the next thing? I mean, I always said, why not throw it in a high school stadium in Texas? And I know, I know, I know. People are going to say, well, what are you talking about? Rev high school stadium. What, well, what did no. you say? <laughs> but I'm telling you, out here in Texas, it's a totally different world. If you were happy with Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium, you'd be happy with like a good handful of high school stadiums that are in the Houston area, uh, in the suburbs, things like that. I feel like there's, those come with their own set of problems, though, because are they – they might be somewhat TV ready, but are they TV ready for like a professional broadcast like the UFL? They might be ready for like a high school broadcast that sure they televise games, but it's not the glitz and the glamour. I don't, you know, there's going to be no, uh, you know, anyway. My, so my I thing don't know. Would, I think besides that point too, uh, certain, um, I would say uh, libations would not be allowed possibly at high school stadiums. Maybe this is Texas, brother. Maybe uh, it depends on the stadium. It depends on the state. There are I, a select few that you I learned can a lot get about. Libations. I learned about Texas high school football a lot from you. So this always fascinates me when I hear. <laughs> well, stuff you like should this. just know this, Zach. If there's a building, it's probably selling beer. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> like, I know it's a common thing now where you can go to the movie theater and buy a beer. But what, like even before I moved to Texas, so we're talking like maybe 15 years ago when I first visited that blew my mind. You could get a beer at every movie theater. Now that's like common thing. You can get it. I think, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I just uh, live in Texas now. And I just assume, uh, but no, I mean, Texas, they like, their, they used to have a bar in our Kroger at the grocery store. Like a lit, like you could do what? your shopping. And then there was a bar in there. I think they shut it down. Cause there was a fight, which is a shame. <laughs> Because it was great. I'd just go do some shopping. Well, boom. All right, grab me that I get, IPA I or whatever. Grocery shopping, I guess, could be stressful. But, like, is it, like... <laughs> oh, it was really fun to watch the people. There was always some kind of flirting going on. And I'm like, just... A, I wonder if there's a story of, like, oh, how did you guys meet? Well, we were both shopping, and we decided to sit at the bar at the grocery store. And next thing you know, little Bobby's here, you know? Thank, <laughs> like, thank God for my local Kroger. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but they got rid of it, and now I'm sad. But, you know, they won't even let you drink it in the parking lot. I mean, what are you doing to me? <laughs> Every, everything's supposed to be bigger and better in Texas, I guess. Yeah. But that, uh, so, look, I, I do know the, the legends of these stadiums in Texas, you can fit. I guess, look, if that's – if I'm not saying that's like the end-all, be-all boundary. I just know that state, that's like – that does make some people kind of – talk about their experience it's not the end all be all you don't need alcohol to be at a game so don't take that as like oh zach just that's his threshold good football is at a state mm -hmm. with alcohol no 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 no. i can live with soda by the way or a hot dog and some popcorn uh but yeah i mean i think the only thing i get out of that besides talking that point is uh you know we're in this deposit like mystery zone where I think like some XFL fans and specifically Vipers fans without a home are getting some PTSD right now and kind of going, wait a minute, this looks very familiar. What's going on? Why are we fighting? Why are we fighting over a stadium rights deal right now? You know, mm. I thought we got past this. I thought we learned, this is learning lessons of the past from both sides. And I don't know what to tell you. The one, the one rumor slash speculative piece that you and I have discussed that I will not discuss on here because I don't feel confident discussing it. You know, I thought that threshold for certain items from rice was already cleared. Um, so I'm shocked that we're here right now is all I'm tell is all I'm trying to tell you. I don't feel confident speaking about it on here unless you're OK. Mm -hmm. But that's no, the thing. Because I don't know. I don't know if that's even the hang up there. I, that's and see, the that's thing why I'm not know. even that's why I'm yeah, this yeah. Is a very behind the scenes thing for me. But sorry, there's a certain thing we've get over yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. This, this is one thing behind the curtains we've talked about that we thought is a threshold they've crossed that we're shocked hasn't apparently been the threshold that was to be crossed. So, you know, yeah, kind of weird that rice is still up in the air because we thought it'd be done by now too. Personally for yep. both of us, we thought it'd be finished by now. Yeah. And, and to that point, again, we are in the speculation zone. There is, it could be finalized and it's just that I, I've not aware, or, you know, most of the other insiders haven't heard that yet. I mean, we're all kind of waiting. Everybody's heard that rice stadium seems to be the play. That's what they're working towards. I've just yet to hear that. The deal is done. Um, and to me, that feels probably why we're still waiting on the schedule here. Now with these town hall events popping up, 
maybe that's an indicator that the deal's done. Schedules are coming. Hopefully, give me a, give me a Houston Town Hall. I'll feel really good. Oh, that's, uh, that's what, what I'm saying. Please, and I will be there. Hey, and here's the thing: if you guys need an MC, you guys need somebody like Flava Flav out there, a hype man. This guy right here. Intro. Here's my right only here. ask. Here's my only ask, guys. Here's the deal: because I know somewhere in a room locked with the lights off, maybe the lights on. I don't know. There's boatloads of usfl referee shirts that nobody's wearing i know a guy that would wear it now it i will offer my services free of charge and i will do i will make people i will i won't say that i will make people come to this event and <laughs> I won't say all that. it takes is no one way. shirt that you're never you won't even miss it it won't even be, you know, so if anyone's listening, that's, that's my, and if you want to be extra sweet, Valentine, Valentine's day is coming up. A UFL ref shirt. I mean, Hey, sign us up. But either way, I actually, I, that's all jokes. I will be at the Houston town hall event when, and if it's announced and I will be there ready to support my coach. Hopefully Russ Brandon that Russ Brandon's there. Hopefully Moose is there because like I said, I love a good opportunity to hang out with Daryl Johnston. Um, and maybe we'll get some other clips, but yeah, you know me, I, I will be actually, I'm going to make a couple phone calls today and see if I can figure out if a Houston town hall event is coming. Get, get uh, together with so, guy, Brett Zaleski, my man, get, you know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm going to pick him. He, he, you know, that thing in this, is, I can't be mad at him. He, if it's something he's not, he's not allowed to tell me, he's not going to tell me. But uh, hopefully he is allowed to tell me, and hopefully it is something that's happening because I will gladly share it with you and everybody else. Uh, so another reason you need to be following us at social media, UFL Newsroom, PF Newsroom, The Ref Says, UFL Podcast, Around the UFL. Dude, I am like the Limes meme guy. I used that for the six-year anniversary picture last year of all the like all the different logos. Yes. And, and it only keeps growing. We're consolidating leagues, but I feel like – we have even more stuff this year, but that's what six years in the game will do to you. Uh, and I'm looking forward to six more flipping big years. Uh, I mean, it's crazy to think if we keep this bad boy going for four more years, we're going to be doing a decade of this decade of news. Uh, I was such Same. a spry young boy when I started this thing, spry middle-aged man. Now I'm like a <laughs> older middle-aged man. <laughs> so it is what it is. But by the time you, you know, you'll be 40 by the time we're done with this Zach. And then you'll, you'll know about all the pain. I'm dealing <laughs> hey, with. <yeah. laughs> you know, uh, creeping up on me. We'll no, get there. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting there. It's getting there. Good Lord. Uh, any, any, I think that's all we had for the topic list. Any other thoughts, final thoughts before we head off into the distance and, you know, work towards Monday for episode three of around the UFL. Uh, not really with UFL. I mean, look, we're, we're waiting on more. And I think there's a few more announcements we need to sit, sit on still. And I mean, look, I'm just, I'm just going to reiterate town halls. I want to see more of those. I like that. We're getting a few of them announced publicly announce them get more people out there let's have a blast and keep building the momentum because it's anyone i talk to whether it's facebook group owners mm -hmm. or you know you talk about just channel people that are looking at analytics everyone's talking about this damn league like mm -hmm. as much or close to as much as 2020 so far which is so good metric wise and at least for buzz for potential viewership so good stuff to hear. And also because I want to tie this back in because I keep talking IFA and uh, I don't know how much more I could talk IFA after this episode. Um, I want to end with these notes. Um, I have learned that two of the teams are, uh, they're converting from being small arena teams to uh, yeah. turn into actual teams. So uh, like the Las Vegas Kings and the Tampa Bay Tornadoes are now, they're going from being arena squads that were supposed to be really small arena squads to professional squads. And uh, mm -hmm. that kind of, as you've talked, I'm definitely hitting a pause and uh, holding pattern on this when I hear that. Because uh, specifically the Tornadoes, they have had a unique history. Um, you well, you know all about it, yeah, the know? arena stuff. But yeah, we'll have to pick brains on that. The, the one that jumps out to me as... I wouldn't say it's weird. It just something seems off is their TV deal, right? So they I have just never heard of right now TV. Like, so it's a that? it's a streaming service that offers over the air television. 
And so if it was the other way around, that would have been like, oh, good. They're going to be on over the air television. They're on a streaming service that offers over the air television. That's also going to offer the IFA. Now this is, and I will put an asterisk here. That's not to say that this is the final deal. Um, I will say this at minimum, it looks that there's going to be an opportunity for you to watch these games in an affordable way. I, I I'll have to look at the pricing, but um, from what I understand right now, TV is pretty affordable. I'm actually pulling it up right now while we're talking. Um, so at minimum, you know, there's going to be a way to watch these games. Um, it's not going to be, you know, super easy to find if you don't know, right. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we'll see any advertisements. Um, it's interesting. I, I think that they have an opportunity in front of them, if anything, because, uh, I mean, they're, they have the whole West Coast to their disposal. I think we were talking about this on Monday with the, you know, Portland, right? It's Port- free for the yeah. picking. So, I mean, you some know? of the markets are getting into, like, Portland alone. You know, Portland's been – I've seen so many people on our dis- on our PFN Discord, by the way, in the description link there if you want to join – Mm-hmm. They talk about they want to go to Portland. Like they're actually there's a contingent that was joining up when we were talking USFL that wanted to see the Breakers go to move to Portland, not because yeah. of the history, but because they felt it was a better city than New Orleans to go to. And here's the experiment. Honestly, is this if they want to try? Not to mention Tampa Bay. Even if with the tornadoes, Tampa Bay being retried again, like they're trying markets that either mm-hmm. lost their team or felt like they were left for dead, or ones that have had buzz but like no commitment. And now they're getting the commitment. So quick correction, quick correction on this. So I was, I was dead wrong. So I'm glad I looked at this. Uh, So right now TV is over the air in select markets. Really? And so you can, it seems like you can also stream it online. I don't know if you have to sign. Doesn't look like you need to sign into a provider either. So that is okay. I wonder if they got a list. Cause I want to see if I can do it. They do. So they do. They have, let's see, Albany, New York. It's not a very big list. So we have okay. uh, Albany, New York, Atlanta, Georgia, S- Central Southern Utah, uh, Clarksville, Tennessee, Coblesville, Go- Coble Skill, New York, hey. Cortez, Colorado, Montana, California, Montana, Pennsylvania, Florida, Nevada. So they have Vegas, uh, Montana, Los Angeles. Okay. Okay. Uh, Nashville, Tennessee, Norfolk, okay. Virginia. Northeast Arkansas, Odessa, Texas, which doesn't do me a lot of good, but yeah. if you can stream it, uh, it's streaming. Uh, Pennsylvania or Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, okay. uh, Idaho, Reno, Nevada, Salt Lake, Utah. So they basically have all of Utah. It sounds like. Well, isn't Salt Lake already uh, central? Anyway, yeah, uh, Idaho, Florida, Kentucky, Tennessee, Kansas. Um, so they have a lot of Montana, Damn. smaller cities. I was other I was, than L.A. I'm surprised they have L.A. I was crossing my fingers I could tune in like over the Well, you the can OTA. online. Well, I know I can online, but you know, I was yeah. curious to see how good the signal is. You know what I'm talking about, but Yeah, yeah. That is no, a, that is antenna. fascinating though. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, TV's weird right now anyway. Like you're seeing a lot of players come look in at because Raw. there's just a lot of stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, look Raw at WWE going to Raw, 10 year Netflix moving away from traditional TV in every way you could think about it. That to me, that's the beginning. That is the beginning we are going to see well, we already saw well with the USFL, people were, didn't love it, but they put some of the games I, exclusively I on Peacock. NFL p- playoffs, they say, hey, hope you got Peacock. Now WWE, ten well, five right. years guaranteed. Five years guaranteed that they're on Netflix only. That's crazy. That's I, crazy. Sports is evolving rapidly is all I can tell you. I mean, shoot, we haven't even... You want to talk football? I mean, I know the rumors have been thrown around about the media deal for the AFL, and one of those has been Amazon for a long time. You know, mm-hmm. that still is uh, to be seen. They have said publicly they're now going to wait until uh, apparently around Super Bowl week to announce that. Uh, but Amazon's been in the picture, and it's like, hey, market's changed. There's a lot more places to throw your stuff. Actually, speaking of like IFA, and this is the last thing I'll talk because I bet some people are like, all right, whatever. I'm yeah, yeah. IFA, but like just to put it out there, like Roku and Tubi, apparently they had talks like earlier this year. Like apparently they're going to put some content on those platforms too. Tubi is broadcasting G League basketball games. Think about yeah. that. Like there's just a lot of new places now. The big money's still the big networks, but if there's a place you can throw your crap onto it, like and it's free, most of the, and especially the free part. By the way, let's yeah, keep that in yeah. mind. If it's free. 
no, it's me, <laughs> and it's also yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, 100%. Uh, curiosity will at least play out, and at least we'll, you and I know you know we we'll watch some of it, at least a game. If yeah, it, when I it mean, comes if this out. hits the field, I'll, I'll I'll watch a couple games. I mean, we'll probably start reporting on it. I'm hoping to catch some more ELF this summer. I'm actually hoping we talked about this on Monday on around the UFL. Ooh. I'm hoping to go to that Paris Musketeers game. I'm really hoping the schedule kind of fits in line with while I'm out there. Um, <laughs> So well, if, we can only can, hope if you can. And, uh, well, the, the wife does not feel like it's uh, taken away from the trip. Uh, that is a good fan base. They pack, they pack it pretty nice over there in Paris. It's mm-hmm. a good, good contingency of folks for that squad. So, yeah. And maybe, choice. maybe that's my squad now where, you know, I'm the musketeer. I got, like I said, I got to get the big hat with the feather and like one mm. of those big, like curvy swords, you know, I, I stuck with the I, maroon. I'm a Ryan fire guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I like championship that. under my belt. <laughs> I like that. Uh, So I think that's it for the show this week. Big episode 75. Like I said, we we should be doing more of these more consistently. But until then, hey, Mondays, you get to see our pretty faces along with the full all-star PFN panel. So make sure you're tuning in every Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern. And a good way to remember is make sure you subscribe. Click the bell. It builds builds morale. morale. It also lets you know when we're live doing things like that. And doing things like Spring Stock 3, which is coming up in just about nine weeks. Should have details on guests and location shortly. But as I mentioned in the beginning of the show, let us know down in the comments below. Would you rather a tailgate? Would you rather us go in inside of a venue? Let us know. Like I said, let your voices be heard. We love to listen to the fans. We love to. I mean, we're doing this for y'all. It's not like we're making any money off of this. No. Just if anybody was curious, this is purely love, for the love of spring love football. Love of the game right here, yes. Um, love of the game. So, yeah, you know, also make sure you're following over on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at UFL Podcast, at UFL Newsroom, at PF Newsroom, at Around the UFL, at Zach Kyleman, at The Ref Says, you know, the whole deal. We're and everywhere. if you, for some reason, miss part of this show, so I'm just going to, just because I want to add on here, if you mm-hmm. can't watch the whole show or if you happen to be busy and out and about we do post the parts of the full episode on tiktok now we started that with episode 74 be sure to follow us on tiktok if you for some reason need to watch in bite-sized chunks that is your go-to place right on right on so hey until next time sign you